Venny comes in with an advantage, but I want to feel Clarendon College may just be more pumped up for this one. Well, this is the starting lineup for Clarendon College. Roche Burrell in goal, the back four of Rugel Francis, Romario Thompson, Devonte Hodges, and Atibo Green in the middle of the park. Theon Cupi, DeAndre Gadamore, and Malachi Douglas, who has 17 goals to his name, as well as 13 assists. Up top, Jamel Boudou Ashley. Kahim Dixon, of course, with 28 goals and 16 assists. And of course, on the right hand side, their number eight, Christopher Hull, with 12 goals and 14 assists to his name. Yeah, and they'll play the 4-3-3, but it's always fluent from them. You expect them to go. What I think is going to be important is that they play much quicker. I suspect Lemieux will go with the 4-3-3 as well. Antoine Gooden between the sticks for them. The back four of Brandon Wallace, O'Neill Headley, Tavon Coleman, and Ramon Francis in the middle of the park. Jason White, Denzel Watson, and Kyle Gordon, who has 10 goals to his name so far this season. Tajon Cummings with six. Orain Watson with eight. And DeAndre Johnson, their leading scorer on the right-hand side with 11 goals, the top three. Yeah, and this is a team that really knows how to win already. They've won the Champions Cup and they feel they can have the measure of this clan and college team. I don't think they'll take anything for granted. It's not the type of thing where they went off and celebrate. Coach Peart said it was just one day and they were... And I, the good thing about it is that we have the chance to see them one more time in the Olivia Shield on Wednesday. Yes, because a handful they were and more. Six goals to the good. A statement as to say, we are the best. And they'll have a chance to say it against Mona. Beware. The yellow blue juggernaut is back, well tuned, and is rolling along. 6 2, the final score, Clarendon College over Glenmuir High. And what a performance we have seen tonight. They were pressing the life out of Glenmuir in the early stages of this one. With lovely football being played. Dixon starting out the drama pretty early in this one. He was beautiful, just exquisite. That was just one of three, the first of three rather. And if you question anything, don't question his finishing. And then you learn later, his work rate is also good. They didn't stop running, they didn't stop pressing. Look at this press from Dixon, forcing the error. We spoke about nerves at the start of this game. Glenmuir were rocked back. Hull with the ball inside. And then at the back post, Ashley with a thumping finish. Yeah, there's not an easy finish there. The goalkeeper came and he had to keep his nerves just to... But he went for pace and height. A decision made in six seconds there. Yeah, you could see him definitely shaping up to go top. The roof of the net. Dixon was on it, started it, looking to finish it. But Ashley was good at that near post. Can't fault the keeper on it. It was a good finish. A call for calm. But CC continued. Delightful stuff. Wonderful. Exceptional. The boy Dixon from Trenchtown to Chapleton. They celebrated that goal. Yeah, that was a, a really good goal. He just weaved his magic there, showing his nifty footwork and just dropped on the shoulder. And then the finish, as we all know, none better than him this season. And you struggle to find better than him over many seasons in the past. He was running for his life yep. after every single goal. But the Trenchtown boys weren't finished at all in this one. Look at this build-up. The overlapping run, spotted. The delivery inside, no issues. Ashley. Pudu Ashley with the second of the night. Well, that's a beautiful finish. I said at any level, you see that type of header and you have it as top draw. Yeah, really met it well. Goalkeeper, no chance. And the glancing header nestled into far corner. Yeah, you've seen that, boy. The blow down there is suggesting, yeah, nothing I could do. Well, they tried to get back into this game. They had to. Cummings did really well. And uh, after all that confusion deflected, Across the line by Romario Thompson. Yeah, Romario Thompson. Yeah, and he honed it up. He set off his chest. Nothing he could do about it. It just came to him inadvertently. And by the time he could react, he was in the back of the net. But immediately, not too long after that, Clarendon College says, OK, 
we changed gear. Yep, and look at how they changed gear. I mean, there are other chances, but we only have time to show the goals. And that was sublime from Gallimore. That was a rasping drive there. Once he cut inside, only thing hides for goal. And from the other angle, always going away from keeper. He swerved away from him. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing. Tinier was all he got. Gallimore kept trying. Many thought it was too little, too late. And he did well, Miller to recover and blast that one in. Had a goal on the bench and was trying to, to launch the recovery for Glenn Muir. Clarendon couldn't deal with the cross inside very well. Came off his header and he was quickest to react. And just like that, they were within three goals of Clarendon College. But the final demanded a hat-trick from Kehim Dixon. The run from outside the box, the thrill, and the execution, magnificent. Yeah, his second goal, almost a replica of that one, because he weaved his way through, and he only had one side, and it was almost like a dope in. The keeper couldn't react in time, but all you have to look at is the work before that finish. Exquisite, beautiful. Let's look at the stats. They were pretty one-sided. Clarendon College with 23, 11, on target, their shots. Glenn Muir with 11 shots, five of which were on target. Four yellow cards were shown in this one, and you can see nine corner kicks as opposed to none for Glenn Muir High and possession in the end. Clarendon College with 65% of it. It's now time for the water man of the match. And it Thank you, Dwight. I'm joined by the man of the match of this Dacosta Cup final, Kahim Dixon of Clarendon College. He'll receive his man of the match award from Brittany Roberts, marketing coordinator of Water. All right, thank you, Brittany. Thank you very much, Kahim. Let's have a quick chat. Your champion once again, two years running now, you're dancing. How happy are you to be champion I'm once very again? happy, very, very happy. Tell my family that this one is personal and they are displayed tonight. So I'm very happy. How do you perform so well in finals? Where does that come from? Come from the mindset from the day before. The mindset to come perform in the finals. All right, congrats, Kaim. Thank the best. you very much. Yeah, Kaim Dixon there, two-time Dakasta Cup champion now, and he's a dancing man. I'm joined now by Coach Andrew Plate of Glenmuir. Coach. It seemed like one of those games that just wasn't going your way and CC were on their game. You started to fight back in that second half, though. What do you think about the game, though? I thought the worst possible start. We planned for them coming high up the field. Um, that's why we had two strikers. But poor decision to play the ball short into the middle of the field. And that's the start they want because a rhythm team, they want to be a goal up early. Um, Second half, a little bit more control, even though it's end to end. But it's just a tough start and hard to dig yourself out in a final from there. All right, thank you, coach. Congrats on the yeah, good season. Yeah, that's coach Andrew Peart there. And we're joined now by the champion, coach Lenny Hyde. Coach Kaim said he was not leaving this place. Eh? Kaim Dixon said he wasn't leaving today without the Dacasta Cup okay. trophy. You guys delivered. How well do you feel about that? Why well, I'm very happy. I'm elated. I'm happy for the players mostly. Um, this one is dedicated to Junior Samuels, our trainer. He's not here. He's very ill right now. So we dedicate this one to him. The players were hell bent and said they're not leaving anything out here on the pitch today. They work pretty hard from the start. That's how we pump them up for this game. And the last the other day, make it up more, more hungrier. This time around, and you see how they display it today. All right, congratulations, coach. Go and celebrate with your boys. Now. Thank you. Wow. Well, it's going to be class against tactics you feel because there's no way, but what I've seen with Mona, yes, they're a good team. Going toe to toe with this kind of college team could be a death sentence, but who knows what tactics they'll go with. But whatever it is, I think both teams are well positioned to put on a really good game, a classical game for that Olivia Shield. I think it's fair to say that Mona with a solid defensive unit would not be as open, which means that it's a challenge for Clarendon College.
to try and do something and also prevent Mona High from scoring. Yeah, Craig Butler, Butler, the pragmatic coach he is, was certainly not to try to go help Aleda and he will play with his strength. First the check, then the prize. They are loving this moment because they feel it's vindication. That's exactly what it is, Donald. Vindication for them. So you had one check for two hundred thousand dollars, and now. Presentation of a check for five hundred thousand dollars. Well, there's more that's checks coming. Yeah, that's the Ingram first of Wright. a <laughs> couple of checks the heading their way. The appetizer. <laughs> the Clarendon College team, five hundred thousand dollars. Another one with five hundred, so that's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the presentation of the Da Costa Cup by President of Issa Keith Wellington and Brittany Roberts, Marketing Coordinator, Water. The Da Costa Cup Here's the prize. To the boys from the hills of... Here Washington, is the prize. Clarendon this Cali. is what their hearts wanted in lifting the Da Costa Cup for an 11th time. Chapleton once again celebrating at the mecca of Jamaica's football. They had put on a footballing clinic tonight what a night for those boys